I've been a member of this universe for a really long time, probably since very close to the beginning when it was only Galaxy Zoo. It's how it originally started was Galaxy Zoo. And then once they launched other projects, it became the Zooniverse based off of Galaxy Zoo. But you can say it's a collection of web-based citizen science projects that use the efforts of volunteers to help researchers deal with the flood of data that confronts them. And they have, um, when you go, if you want to log in, sign up, I'll put a link to this page here, and you can see the live projects they have right now are Ancient Lives, Cyclone Center, Planet Hunters, Milky Way Project, The Moon Zoo, Galaxy Zoo Hubble, Old Weather, and Solar Storm Watch. <clears throat> but any of those uh, other projects listed that they had, you can still go in and, and sort through some data. You know, it, everything is still recorded. It's still all out there for you. But I guess these are the ones that they still need help with at the moment. <clears throat> so again, you can see they have it broken down into space. How do galaxies form from uh, the Hubble? Explore the surface of the moon. Study uh, CMEs and solar flares. Use Kepler to find planets around stars. Um, how do stars form? Well, you know, that's a, I'll show you that the screen shot from that coming up later. They have the Mars Zoo, uh, black holes in their jets, and again, to find the birthplace of planets. Sorting out sunspots and helping discover near-Earth asteroids. They also have Earth-based things. Um, you know, using old ship logs from around the world that <clears throat> or old logs that were kept on ships from the past to try to reconstruct the climate around the world. And then uh, satellite images of tropical cyclones to see how they form and strengthen over time and, and all that kind of stuff. Then you have <clears throat> studying the lives of, of ancient Greeks, just uh, translating papyrus scrolls pretty much. I'll show you a screenshot of that too. Soldiers' diaries from the First World War, uh, the history of citizen science. So any, that one's actually kind of cool. Also, I mean, all of these are pretty, I've tried them all. It's a good way to kill time. <laughs> but I, li I like that one, the citizen science one. And then uh, snapshots of the ocean floor to, you know, cl classify whatever life they find there. Uh, photos of bats. And they have like uh, cams in the Serengeti. Just, you know, not drones, but just like cameras just set up. So any, mo I guess their motion's activated. So any animals that come by, it'll snap a picture of them. And then you log those animals, like what you see there. And notes from nature transcribe museum records to record what's on there. Basically, the handwritten notes. Dive into the world of plankton. Uh, California condor count. Uh, going into kelp forests. Uh, images of penguins. And wildlife in urban Chicago. And then finally, on the biology side, they have <clears throat> analyzed real-life cancer data, track genetic mysteries, and uncover the building blocks of the universe. Um, basically looking at data coming out of CERN, which <laughs> I'm not going to get into here. So just took some screenshots of some of the active projects. And this is the Ancient Lives one, uh, where you translate these papyrus scrolls here. So it'll show you like a picture of that, and then you choose what the, the best match of a letter there, and then any other markings that you might see on the page. Um, you know, you can choose it there. It's very interactive. It's, it's easy to use. They have tutorials on all of this stuff. Uh, this is their Cyclone Center that they have. Um, again, get started, learn more. Like I said, it's very helpful, all their all their instructions. And you can see I took this from the, uh, <clears throat> they have a blog. On all the stuff, they have blog, talk, feedback. Um, you know, you could save your favorite images as you come across them and, and into your own account. And then you can like discuss with others what you found and if you found any interesting stuff. I actually saw on there's one that classified near earth asteroids and I <laughs> three pictures back to back to back of a UFO moving across the sky. Like couldn't have been more clear as like a dot and an arc hanging above it. It was obviously a UFO. So I saved those. Um <clears throat> Moon Zoo, all the uh, publicly available images from the moon. Um they use this to Study craters, boulders, any streak marks, anything that you find on there that isn't normal. And this is like the screenshot there. So is it a crater? Is it a mound? Um, 
give you examples of what it might be. Any boulders, any the exclamation points for like anything out of the ordinary that you found. I forgot to take the screenshot of the opening page, but this is from the Mars Explore, Explore Mars one. Um, those fans or streaks, as they call them, are seasonal. So they come around as the seasons change and they ask you to map them so that they can see how they evolve over time. Really interesting stuff. And the formations are just amazing. And again, these are only the publicly available images. So anything juicy, I doubt that NASA is actually going to release to the project. But even even so, I mean, these are great looking images. Yeah, And once you sign up for the project, they'll send you emails when they upload new data or have different projects. <clears throat> so you always keep updated with it. It's a really, if you have like an extra 20 minutes here and there, or if you're just bored on a Saturday, you know, there's a really good way to spend time. It actually helps. <laughs> it's not just like watching something crappy. It actually helps. Um, this is, they use the Kepler telescope data to f try to find planets or you know, pulsing stars or, or anything that isn't normal. So you can see this is like a, I don't want to get into exactly what it is, but it's the light curve from a star over time. Like the x-axis is in days and y-axis is in the, the frequency or the intensity of light. So you can see these are two different stars with two different curves. You know, and just kind of Again, when you go through the tutorial, all this stuff will, will make sense. And then the last one that I have coming up here is, uh, again, it's Hubble data. Actually, I think this last one is Spitzer data, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Spitzer Space Telescope. This is infrared about how stars form. And you can see there's over about 1.7 million classifications so far, 135,000 galaxies. So, I mean, this has been around for a while, and it, each time a classification gets done, and they each take about 10 seconds, 20 seconds each, depending on how cool the picture is. So they're basically just photos like this. They're in infrared, so the colors aren't, you know, what we would see. You know, we obviously can't see in that range. But it's, it's stuff like this. You can see the, the filaments, the tendrils, the bubbles. And actually, this is what you can mark. A bubble star cluster, EGO, galaxy, or an object. So you can see right in the center of the page, there would be something there. Um, kind of a couple different star clusters around there. Pillars, when you do click on object, you get pillars, streaks, you know, anything random like that. Galaxies, like if there's a galaxy in the background, you can click on that too. So I'll put a link to this page if you want to create an account and just kind of go mess around in there. Um, it's a lot of fun stuff. It's interesting. There's, like I said, they're constantly putting up new data and creating new projects. So it's uh, if you're into science and you actually kind of want to help and make a difference, there you go. Enjoy.